والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري وهل لك دته من لساني يفقهوا قولي my dear brothers and sisters i welcome all of you with islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh among the rights of a muslim is that when salam is given it's obligatory that you have to respond so it's a young crowd right we are all youth assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Okay, mashallah, that's better. So we are all awake. Alhamdulillah, good. The topic given to me is gems from Surah Yusuf with regards to morality and ethics. Surah Yusuf, one of the amazing surahs, one of the best stories. that what allah azza wa jalla says about surah yusuf surah yusuf is chapter number 12 from the quran and it has 111 ayats all the stories in the quran are the best no doubt about that but specifically allah azza wa jalla says that we have given is one of the best stories and in the quran we have so many stories but the speciality of surah yusuf is that you find the complete story in one surah itself unlike if you want to see the musa alaihi salam story so you have to 20 different places or 25 different places you will find musa alaihi salam story but surah yusuf complete in one surah and alhamdulillah this surah was revealed at the time when it was testing time for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was tried in the 10th or 11th year of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he lost his support abu talib and when he lost his beloved wife khatija may allah be pleased with her when the quraish were troubling rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he lost his morale at that time to raise the morale allah azza wa jalla revealed this surah and the reason why allah azza wa jalla reveals a story allah tells that in the last ayah of surah yusuf itself that they reveal this story so that the men of understanding may take heed take lesson from it ibratul ulil alham so the men of understanding can take lesson from it we have to take lesson from the surah yusuf now we all know the surah use of the story of prophet yusuf alaihi salam the trials he went through some of the scholars they say that his trial period was about 40 years he was tried and tested for 40 years allahu akbar so we don't have time to go through the complete story i'll start from where what is required for us today that with regards to the moral aspect the morality The morality is our behavior, our attitude in different situations. Now Yusuf alayhi salam, when his brothers dumped him in a well and he was helped by the caravan and he was sold in Egypt, and he was bought by the minister, a noble, honorable man, whom Allah refers in the Quran as Aziz. He buys and he brings it home and tells his wife that. take care of this young man give extra care don't deal like how you deal with other slaves maybe in future we might adopt him he's special he saw something in yusuf alaihi salam in which he said this boy is special this something called firasha some people they can see that something special in certain people after that we're going to see few ayats from verses 22 onwards so in verse 22 allah azza wa jalla says that 
ولما بلغ اشده اتيناه حكما وعلما وكذلك نجزي المحسنين so when yusuf alayhi salam he reach ashud ashud means manhood he was complete man approximately between 18 to 40 is considered as youth in islam so exact age we don't know but he has something that he has reached his manhood and another aspect about yusuf alayhi salam is that prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said Allah Azawajal divided the beauty into two halves. One half he has given to the mankind of this dunya and other half to Yusuf alayhi salam. Right? SubhanAllah, just imagine he was the most handsome man. Very, very handsome. Half of the beauty he has. And Allah Azawajal says that we gave him hukman and ilm. What is hukman? Hukman has two meanings. One is power, another is wisdom and knowledge. So what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? What is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Okay, I'll give you an example. Tomato is a fruit or a vegetable. Is it a fruit or a vegetable? Fruit, right, that's knowledge, it's a fruit. So if someone is asking you fruit salad, do you add tomato in it? Along with apple, pears, other fruits, do you add tomato in it? No, that's wisdom. It's the application of that knowledge. Knowledge is one thing, and application of it is other thing. So Allah gave both to Yusuf alayhi salam. And Allah says that this is something we give for those who are muhsinun. So muhsinun are those who attain the level of ihsan. So what is ihsan? As Prophet ﷺ said that ihsan is that you pray, you are aware that if you are not seeing Allah Azawajal, at least Allah is watching you all the time. Subhanallah. So when we go to that level, Allah Azawajal bestows something extra like how he has bestowed Yusuf A.S. And then, in verse number 23, Allah says, Then, in whose home Yusuf was, that lady living with, she seduced him. Right? So, rawa, the word, waraddu, warawaddu, this is something that, it's not something she does one fine day. This is something she's been doing continuously. Trying to seduce him. You know, many times Allah in the Quran, He gives graphic details. Right? Many times He gives graphic details. But sometimes Allah only gives what is required. So here, we are to understand that she started with talking, flirtatious, trying to give indirect signals, right? So one of the important things, what we have to be careful about in our life is that being secluded with opposite sex. Khalwa, Prophet ﷺ said that if a man and woman are in khalwa or that in a situation where others cannot see them, they have secluded, they are not alone. The third person is shaitan, is there to instigate. Shaitan attacks us in two ways by shahawat and shubahat. One is he incites desire inside the people. So we are not supposed to be alone, not even for group study. Two people should not be alone. We have to be very careful about that. There's no way out. You can say that I'm a very good person. My heart is so pure. I have no evil intention. It's all rubbish. There was a small uh, <clears throat> research. We can't say research. One of the students of uh, University of Utah, I think it's available in YouTube, he did a random interview with uh, men and women in the campus. 
So what was the question? Question was that, no, you have friends, right? You have boyfriends, you have girlfriends. So he asked some of the boys, so you have girlfriends? Oh, yeah. So you always think pure about her like only friend? No dirty thoughts comes in your mind about your friend? They were like, <laughs> sometimes. The 100%. All the men, they said, yes, one point of, sometimes we do think, evil, think, evil thought comes in on our mind. If it's not coming, then something wrong with you. You have to check with the doctor. But the same is not with the women. There was another small experiment conducted by BBC. Right? So they made some of the men to watch a news program read by a male newsreader. Right? Headlines today. Now, everyone, listen. After five minutes, they asked the questioner, so what, what, what other news did you understand? What was the news about? So they gave the details. The next, another set of group of people, they made a, a lady news reader to read the news. Right? Afterwards, they asked, so what was the news? Her lipstick was not matching her dress. Right? She has a really good color selection. Excuse me? Uh, who bothered about the news, right? This was the reality. We have to understand. Allah Azawajal created us like that. So that's the reason Allah Azawajal clearly says, you cannot be alone with them. Then, this wife of Aziz, what she does, الأبواب, Now she determined to do the act, She's planning, husband is away, Yusuf is there alone. So she locks all the door. She just not locks all the door, she makes sure that it is doubly checking that it is locked, double, right? Totally shutting off. And then she tells. She, after closing the door, she first said, Come, let's do it. Come, let's do it. In verse number 24, Allah says, And indeed, she did desire him, and he would have inclined to her desire had he not seen the evidence from his Rabb. Thus it was. Very, very important ayah. Pay attention here. Allah is saying that this lady, she desired him. She wanted him at all cost. She's ready. She's prepared. At the same time, Allah is saying that ham means a high level of intention. That is the next after ham is amal, action. You do it. That level of intention is ham. So Allah is saying, hamma bi. She had that intention. And also, wa hamma biha laula. Even Yusuf would have inclined if he had given him the burhan. If he haven't shown him the clear proof. Allahu Akbar. A prophet of Allah. You think the Prophet of Allah will be inclined towards an evil act? To an evil lady? One of the aspects of Surah Yusuf, if you analyze, subhanallah, throughout this story, Yusuf would have struggled his trials like a normal human being. There was no direct help coming from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, when a man, when his prime youth, his hormones are thrashing, and a woman of a noble family, wife of a minister, she's asking, she's ready, she's throwing herself up. At that situation, at that situation, a normal human being, how will you react? Definitely, he will incline towards it. So what Allah is saying, unless we have given him the burhan, what was the burhan? If you see the tafsir, there are so many narrations regarding what was the burhan. But what it was that, subhanallah, it was the in-depth knowledge, his yaqeen in akhirah, in yaqeen in Allah Azza wa Jal, 
which made him safeguard himself from at that point of time. If he hadn't had that yaqeen in Allah Azawajal, Allah is watching, I'm accountable for this, this is haram, even he would have fallen into it like any other human being. Subhanallah, at that time, what he did was, Ma'adha Allah. He sought help from Allah Azawajal. Right? He didn't say, Auzu Billah. He said that only help is sought from Allah Azawajal. No matter in which point of situation you are into, you have to always turn to Allah Azawajal first. Number two, our weakness. We cannot say that wherever I go, it's immorality. Right? I cannot lower my gaze. I cannot do it. So if I am provoked, I give in. No, you cannot say that. You cannot say that. Allah Azza wa Jal will reward. When you are tempted, when you have the opportunity to fall into the sin, but at that time you fear Allah Azza wa Jal and you seek Allah's help, Allah will help you out from that situation. Subhanallah. That's the reason Allah Azza wa Jal pointing out the situation. Wherever the haram situation is there, don't give in because of your weakness. Don't give in. If anybody is coming, opposite sex, trying to give, shake hand with you, don't give in. Don't try to be alone, whether it's a lab or a class or even for five minutes, don't do it. When you have the opportunity and at that time you turn away, turn away, Allah Azza wa Jal will reward you. Subhanallah. Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says that the Salaf used to say, the glance is like a poisonous arrow. Once you have a glance, that's the reason the best solution offered by Islam for safeguarding yourself from immorality is from Surah Nur, chapter 24, ayah number 30. What does it Allah say? Ya amanu. Lower your gaze and guard your modesty. Lower your gaze. That's a symbol which will safeguard. Imam Ibn al Qayyim rahimullah, he gives in detail, if you lower your gaze, how your heart is protected. Once you give the glance, the first one is ma for you, Allah forgives. And then you go for the second, then it's from shaitan. It's from shaitan. So once you give the second glance, your heart becomes grieved. You look at someone and you wanted someone like that to be your wife, wish I have this like, girl like this. So shaitan provokes subhanallah you have to safeguard your uh, gaze and one of the scholars very clearly said that you know our soul is like a camel our soul is like a camel how for the first time if you have to make the camel sit down you have to exert yourself you have to put in all your strength and you have to drag the camel and make it sit but if you do that few times, after that, whenever you want to make it sit, you don't have to make any effort, it will sit by itself. Same way, the soul, it will be very difficult in the beginning to turn away from such fitna. It will be a struggle, it will be a jihad which we have to do. But once you get used to it, once, twice, thrice, then afterwards lowering the gaze will not be an issue. Otherwise, it will be a big issue. So, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very clearly said in a hadith, in Ibn Majah, authentic hadith, that every religion has its characteristic, uh, signature characteristics, yeah, unique characteristics. And the signature characteristic of Islam is haya, is modesty. My dear brothers, this from the Tra uh, traps of shaitan that he will induce and incite you to do that which is haram. Remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Seek forgiveness constantly. Do istighfar and increase your ibadah so that Allah would give us the strength. My dear brothers and sisters, always remember protecting your iman is the biggest challenge we have in today's situation. If you could protect your iman, if you can strengthen your iman, inshallah, none of the shaitan's attack can foil you and inshallah, we can safeguard and protect ourselves. And I don't have time to give some of the uh, <clears throat>
things which you have to stay away from as you protect yourself from falling into immorality. Like I said, I just, without giving the details, I just give you some of the points. Number one, avoid halwa, being secluded with opposite sex. Number two, avoid shaking hands with opposite gender. Rasulullah he never shook hands with uh, women whom he is not related to. Right? And number three, for the women, Prophet has advised that if they have to leave their house, go out for something, let them not put perfume on them. Right? So that the men could feel and it can be provoked. And then, Rasulullah also prohibited, Allah prohibited for women beautifying their voices. Beautifying their voices. So it's a, <clears throat> a big topic actually. Okay, anyway, inshallah. Then, Prophet then we have to fear Allah Azza wa Jal. We have to distance ourselves from all things which leads to immorality. Whether it's uh, mixed guru partying or anywhere where there is intermingling happens, where it's promiscuity is so close, you're going to sit and, uh, you know, uh, your body is going to touch that close, such a places you have to avoid. And you have to avoid seeing, reading those things which can provoke you unnecessarily. You are giving room to shaitan to provoke your desires. We have to stay away from this. You know, in Surah Furqan, with this I'll conclude. Surah Furqan, chapter 25, ayah 68 and 69, Allah Azza wa Jal talking about three major sins, serious sins. One is talking about those who don't associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jal in their worship. Those who don't commit shirk. And then those who don't take a life without any valid cause. Those who are forbidden to Take killing someone unnecessarily without any valid reason. And number three, committing zina. These three things very serious. Why? Number one, shirk destroys your religion totally. If you're committing shirk, no matter what good deeds you do, it's invalid. Number two, killing someone. Khatalun huh? nafs is something that it losses people. People's life are lost. And going near zina, it destroys your honor and dignity. It destroys your honor and dignity. So these three things Allah Azza mentions in Surah Furqan. So we have to safeguard ourselves. Inshallah, maybe next time we can do in detail what are the other things. But this time given to me is over. So with this, I conclude. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.